Welcome back to During Business Hours. We're in the Carmichael location. A little bit of a audio experience today. We want to talk to you all about shitty customers. Eric, in the last 45 days, what would you say has been your biggest problem with shitty customers? The impatience for timelines, we've told them. So expect- the usual problem. Expectation? The expectation. We had a guy, what was it today, come in three times to ask about his delivery? We had told him delivery oh, time the ETA. Rebel. The was, Rebel. Delivery ETA was 5.30 today. It's still not here. That's FedEx's issue because yeah. it went out at 9 and it usually goes out at like 6.30. Yeah. So, so. that's going to push to tomorrow. We're closed if they even deliver. Monday for sure. But we, we told him 5.30. If we get it within you know 40 minutes having at the end of the day, we'll have it done at 7 and call him or six and we never done it before business let him know otherwise it's going to kick to monday and he came in two times after then to ask if it was done and uh it's all not done okay. so we call you so what happened with naeem naeem that's what it was so we had a recent issue this is not the reason i'm out here i was coming to california anyway but it came abruptly because we had a department of consumer affairs complaint stay tuned for that we're going to start with naeem naeem owns a company called marvon's Cell care. Now, Mr. Naeem came to us because we do B2B work on a very small scale, in store, local only, because we believe in collaboration over competition. Um, you want to be a guy around here and do all your work? That's fine. There's enough for everyone to eat. The problem that I have is when people want to talk shit or say something negative when they've never done business with us because they've heard something or an angry customer has referenced something. Remember, you're dealing with the shit end of the stick. Every time a customer comes to you, they're already angry. Your job is to make them less angry. If you don't, you're not doing your job. You should please them instead of appease them. A big problem I have is, you know, this uh, this customer comes in while we're not here. We're on a road trip in Texas, right? We were in Amarillo. We were clearing Arizona into Texas at yeah. the time. No, oh, no, no. Texas to uh, or, New yeah. Mexico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so we were in New Mexico and it's, gosh, an hour ahead there. It's like 8 p.m. It's 7 p.m. here. And we get a call about Mr. Naeem who dropped off the phone pre-Christmas with me. I told him three to five days post-Christmas holiday. He was not happy about that. He had said that it was a power management integrated controller. His words, it was PMIC. He knows he's from India. He's been in country six months. I said, okay, we all know any of you that have done micro soldering before or have done any XR work before know that that is few and far between, especially when we opened the device and we found that there are signatures all over every damaged area. It looks like tool damage here. I believe there was pry damage. The panels were ripped off the board. It looks like somebody re the CPU. Basically, I call him and let him know somebody's worked on this. He said, yes, me. You know, One of my techs. No, he said me. He was like, me. I work on it. I only want to touch it. He's like, I do no soldering, no heat. I not even open it. I was like, are you sure? Because if your name is Marvon's, there is MCC written in tiny signatures all over this all over board. board. For what reason would somebody put MCC 12 times on a logic board and battery, like, well, there's a nick in the battery. If it's never been opened, how do they happen to have the exact same initials as your company? Exactly. Yeah. So then he come, uh, fesses up and says he took it to a friend who was working for him part-time. I said, okay, it's going to extend the service. You're going to, you're looking at 250 bucks, especially if you re the CPU. I got to send it to somebody else. I'm not going to do it because I'm moving out of town. You're getting pushed in the queue unless you want to pay for a queue skip fee. Then I'll stop what I'm doing right now. But in order to do that, you're paying my time. It's holiday, Christmas. You're going to pay $200 for my time for two hours after hours. Plus, you're going to pay another $300 for the repair. He didn't want to pay that. He didn't want to pay more than $150 when the original quote was $250. Now, stick that in your mind, $250. A week later, I'm coming back from we had just gone to Oklahoma and come back. Mm-hmm. The gentleman somehow is in the office to pick it up because he does not want to wait anymore. So Naeem talks to Andrew, who's uh, a technician, middleman, keeping the peace person at this point. Got over the phone call, super irate. But then he comes in with a little kid to translate. I don't know, assuming. He brought a little cousin, a nephew, a son, whatever. He brought a kid in with him. Yeah, he tried to speak for him. It was, a, yeah, I would say, interesting. The, the fun point is he got probably a 12-year-old kid, About I'd say 12, 12 or less. He got him to translate, but also got very irate where he was like screaming. He words. kept talking over the kid, not letting the kid translate. Yeah. So it got very loud. Andrew tried to calm him down, but it was more of a, I don't want to pay 
a dime. I want my money back and to have the phone fixed. He, he wanted it fixed immediately, full money back, no extra payments, refund of Diag. All, all. He wanted 200% of his service done. Yeah, I was, I was surprised. He wanted all his money back, wanted free service because it was the holidays and it was his customer's phone that he had damaged but didn't damage. We declined. We took his 30 bucks up front like we do with everyone, even B2B if you ever send us something or ever come by. Pretty much. Every, it's, it's standard. It's the standard. We get paid a minimum. Sure as shit. It was unthought of. He doesn't charge a diagnostic. Nobody should charge a diagnostic. This is something some people take their, their premise on. They're missing out. It's a fair trade. So we tell him, unfortunately, he's not getting his money back. He goes out, calls the cops. So police come, what, 7, 15 at night. Yes. Andrew's already 15 yeah, minutes. Trapped. He's trapped. He's got to wait for this guy to call the cops. He's like, all right, you know what, go ahead. Cops come in and ask the gentleman to leave. Right, but they also tell him, unfortunately, that uh, you can't do anything. It's a civil matter. There's been no crime. Police can't intervene. Right. Yeah, it was all so, you know, paid up front. It's a disagreement between two civil parties. No, it seems like at that point he's fine. He made up his mind, takes his phone, probably talks to his customer, and then leaves. We haven't heard from him. That's December 27th? Yeah. It's been almost. It's February 11th. Well, February 10th, we get the notification that he filed a chargeback. Filed a chargeback. Of so, $30, saying it was an incorrect no, charge no, no, no. for he his owed full, full repair yeah. that he was in, uh, entitled to. So he's now rated one star on uh, on Yelp on his one page. And then his other one, uh, 1812 Irving Street, San Francisco, California, Marvin Self Cell Care. Mm -hmm. Uh, unfortunately, he has quite a few one stars, but he's still rated five stars on um, on Yelp because it doesn't recommend any of the one stars. But it did knock him down to four and a half stars. I have his one star here. It looks like he's had quite a few of uh, similar jobs. This is this is another, and we're just going to read Marvin's latest one star before mine. It turns out it was a five star. It said Marvin did an excellent job fixing a crack screen on my Pixel Five. The service is friendly and the price is very reasonable. He said, "Thanks, brother. Select Marvin's care." That's the response on one two twenty three, and then it says on one eight twenty twenty three. Two days after getting my phone repaired, a blotch appeared on the screen, and then it grew over time. A bright green line then appeared. Obviously, something was wrong with the screen or the repair. I went back to Marvin's. And we had an extensive discussion when he insisted that the screen was not defective, but I must have broken it by touching it. Of course I have touched it. It is a touch screen. Two days of normal use should not cause the screen to break, but Marvon's was quite, Marvon was quite insistent that I must have broken it, and therefore I would need to buy a new one for $180. The real problem appears to be he couldn't return the screen. He kept on saying that the seller wouldn't accept the screen back. I guess he buys a screen on the gray market or something because a reputable seller would accept a return of an obviously defective screen. Any seller on a Pixel would have absolutely, doesn't matter if it's eBay, Amazon, everyone knows that Glass Pixels, solid, damn. Pixels are just a, oh, sorry, it's broken. As long as it's not physical damage, you're good. It's really hard because Pixels are some of the thinnest and weakest parts. So it said, would accept this defective screen. Eventually he dropped his demand to $60. He held firm that he even told him that when I told him that I was not acceptable, as I left the store, he started shouting at me. At that point, I had lost all trust and willingness to deal with me in an honest way. So it is not only us that he deals with in this manner. This gentleman has now assaulted customers verbally. He has made threats to us verbally. He has earned his review from me as a business owner. And it's really hard for me to give a negative review to a business. But I reached out to him personally and was like, hey, if you pull the credit, I, it's your 30 bucks, cool. I don't want to deal with this shit. It just looks bad on my reputation with the chargeback. It's so dumb for another business owner to do that. Your reputation is now dead locally because I'll make sure that people know if anyone B2B, it's, you're, you're just scamming people. You're trying to get free work. You're more impatient than an average customer. And we have a pretty extensive network. And the, he's in a couple of the same groups we're in. And even the people in the groups are like, the, you, don't you, do don't, you don't want to talk to this. You have a simple screen repair. Last last option, do it. Anything else? No. It's it's just insane. I'm just shocked. The amount of people that have reviewed him are very zero reviews from Texas and other areas, South San Francisco, other areas. The, there's 22 reviews and almost nine or ten of them look fake. But you know that's a choice. 
hey, look, he's selling a bunch of our cases. I'm sad for him that he acts that way, and I wish him the best in the future, but we're not going to be removing the reviews. It's uh, it's well earned. You know, it's, it's a learning curve. It's a, it's a pattern. He has earned this himself. Most people, when dealing business to business, they want to make a good impression. And even if something goes bad, they want to hold themselves in a place or position that's better for their image. So in the future, it's not such a move. So the reason I, uh, I jumped on a plane instead of driving out here, like I was planning on doing anyway, we got a Department of Consumer Affairs complaint. The only, you can BBB me all you want. A DCA complaint is something you should absolutely, if you have a DCA license and finding out, a lot of people don't have a DCA license. They are the ones you're beholden to for your operation. They can just say, close doors, you can't do business in this market. California has various consumer markets that you have to be licensed in, whether you're a watch dealer, a retail guy, a shopping online guy, anything with a physical business location, you have to have a license in that regard. So we have uh, our BOE and our DCA licenses. Uh, so the Department of Consumer Affairs, we are electronic and appliance licensed. So we get to work in any of those fields. But now there's an investigator because a gentleman in November came in. And what did he bring? T300, Logitech, PS4, driving wheel. Yeah, the driving wheel. So originally he brings it in. I think it was the week after my birthday. Yes. I tell him, all right, it's an annoying thing to work on. We've replaced buttons. We've replaced switches on them a couple of times. Anywhere from fifty to seventy dollars if the board's not bad. I gave him a light quote. Told him three to five days, about a week. I think it was. He called on the fifth day, pissed that it would, he didn't get an update. It's like I'm just so disappointed as a business owner. I want a business to bring. Trying to throw big dick syndrome around. We get a lot of people who talk about as a business owner and then never tell us what business they run or what to feel their instruction business. Okay. It's not even his business. I feel like some people just say, I'm a business and then don't have anything. The problem is this guy went zero to a hundred like Lana Rhodes. I'm just going to say that for people to understand. He went full deep throat. The first call was business owner, lots of business to give. I wish we could do business in the future, but this has ruined it. And I don't want to say that I'm going to ruin things, but you know, online it's going to be bad. I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, you want to pick it up? We can just, we'll stop it here. You paid 80 bucks, 40 for a diagnostic, 40 that rolls over um, as a, a oversized equipment fee. Cause he brought in a giant case racer. A giant, everyone's seen the full car setups people have. He had the, just the steering wheel. He had, he had the, just steering wheel, um, gas pedal and controller. He had that little rig. It was a huge piece bolted onto a bunch of steel, you know, steel, iron, whatever, little pipes. So basically this guy had broken the switch and board for the, the motorized system in the wheel. And so it would continually spin in one direction. And, uh, so we ordered the board. We told him cause he originally said, okay, fine. It'll take 10 days to get there. Better take 10 days. We said, it's an estimate mail. Holidays are coming up, so on and so forth. China was closed at the time. And so it took, I think, 12 days. He called yeah. four more times. He called day seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. So he basically had one of these without the chair. The wheel is what we went and got the board for because there was physical damage to it. The first board was defective, but it did connect to a USB on Windows. So it just wouldn't connect with our the Windows as a built-in socket system to controllers, etc. But normally we can get those wheels to detect and we can detect the pitch, the yaw, all that. Still wouldn't detect. So we call them we're like, hey, can you go ahead and bring Forza in? We don't have Forza in stock if you live close. Otherwise we're gonna have to order Forza. We'll go pick it up down the street. For for the PS4s, these controllers only work for maybe four games now. They've canceled a lot of the sport. We need very specific software to try and test it. It was just convenient. If you lived down the street, he could have conveniently brought it by. But then he tells us, I live three hours away. What the fuck are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Your address here is less than two miles away. He, he gave us an address for two miles away. And anytime he said, he's like, I'm driving now. I'll be there in 40 minutes. He was here in 20 minutes. No 40 minutes away. No three hours away. It turns out it was two miles. And he lives two miles. His truck's there. Problem I had was at that point, I'm like, you know what? We're just going to send this board back. Don't worry. You can pick it up. $80 is paid. 
But at this point, he kept saying, well, my time was wasted. You owe me for two trips out. He only made one trip at that point. And he kept saying, well, now I'm going to bring the game. That's two trips. And I'm, I want compensation off my bill. We quoted him 280 Board was 200 $80 in labor. It's not that big of a deal. And he still, I cannot fathom why he still wanted to because there was ads for the device at $200 on sale on Black Friday. Mm -hmm. So I kept mentioning it to him. like, you know, it's coming up on sale. It's coming up on sale. You might just want to buy a new one. He's like, no, no, no. I want mine. I want mine. I want to play it now. We ordered a new one. They expedited it to us. And we got it the day before Thanksgiving, I think. And it was so funny because the second one worked. Games he had brought in. Everything worked. Bing bong. Bob Jean. The horrible part was he waited till December 10th to pick it up. After all his bullshit, he refused to pick it up until December 10th. The other problem is it's working fine December 10th. Because the second board actually wasn't a board. Since it was Black Friday sales, instead of ordering a second board, here's what I did. I bought it for $200. The entire system. Because he was such a dick, I didn't want anything else going wrong. Brand new, perfect. A brand new one on Amazon for $199, $200 on sale. And I gave it to him. I just swapped the sticker. And I was like, you got everything's brand new. You know what we did? We polished. We gave you everything brand new. We got it all cleaned up. Every board in there has been replaced. Because technically, every board had been replaced. Yeah. You swap the stickers, it's literally a brand new unit. Brand new unit. Yeah, exactly. I, I know you're all thinking. Okay, so what happened? Apple calls January 3rd. Says, it's not working again. Same exact reason. It's never worked. I've had this issue the entire time. The entire time, you say, sir? Oh, that's very convenient. Because it turns out that's not your system. That is a brand new out-of-the-box system. You may have thought that we just replaced the boards in it, but I went on Black Friday, ordered it, came the 6th or 5th or, or whatever it was, and replaced it for you because I knew that you may have an issue. So why don't you do this? I've got a year warranty on this new one. Bring in your entire system and the racing wheel, and we'll see if it's maybe a loose USB or something in that nature because I know you had broken the, the board and the button where it looked like you had wrenched it with a screwdriver so we had fixed that originally but we just didn't want to deal with it so from there he ends up saying no he was like okay he, he first said yes i'll bring it if it'll get it done fuck it, i want this finished he comes in just the wheel oh, no sorry, console game. no game and he's like you know what no i paid for a full fix you said you could test it i need you to figure this out and fix it i'm not giving you my console or my game or the, uh, the pedals, or the... Yeah, he brought just the wheel. Just the wheel. Just the fucking wheel, which is untestable. It, it needs to it be... It works. It's a brand new unit. We plug it in Windows, it works. It works. It's brand it, new. It, it still it functions like it should out of the box. But I can't test it on a game and see what he's talking about, how it's just spinning to one side. We don't have... It's not doing it for us. It's game. not doing it in-game because I can't test it in-game. So he's expecting me to use it on one of our systems and buy the game. Cool. So we buy the game. It's still working. I bought a whole nother third unit. It's working. We tell him this. We say it must be an issue with the system. He doesn't believe us. He says, we okay. We offered, at a, as a courtesy at this point, bring your shit in. Said more professionally, bring your shit in. We will hook it all up. We will test it all up. We will do drivers. We will check. Oh, I, we will We will make this. This is a brand new unit. We will make it work or we will confirm what your issue with your stuff is. Some people no. just have a need to be absolute and this is one of those customers that, for some reason, could not take no for an answer that he was wrong on something. If he doesn't help us help him, to, to him, we're the enemy. We've we've ruined it. It's not his problem. Him being wrong about something is worse than getting his resolution, getting his stuff wrong. Like, oh, your USB cable's bad. We used a new one. It worked. That'll be a dollar. Like, he, that that is too, too much for him. He stuck to the idea that now he lives five hours away. And so he said, A... We need to pay him for his time, pay him all his money back. His hours, his gas, his travel. His travel, his loss in business, and we need to buy his system. But keep it, he needs to keep it, but we need to pay him his system and pay for his time, his labor, everything, and loss of business. We told him, no, I'm not paying you a dime out of my pocket. I've already spent $200 out of pocket on top of the $80 board, or the $200 board and the $80 labor. We've, we're way more in the negative than you think. At that point, he threatened BBB. I was like, go ahead, write your BBB. I don't even respond to BBB. We get a lot of people who try and uh, write fake BBBs. 
uh, just to get refunds for things, and we've had it in the past. They are a privately owned company, never follow BBB. Can I Customers do? don't even use BBB anymore. They have lost so much traction anyway. It is not a reliable source. I can pay BBB $50 today, get certified, A+, plus. they'll remove all the reviews. They've called us, check that video out. It's a, a different one on our site. So don't trust the BBB. It is pay to win. The problem being, he went from BBB to DCA, and then he spun a story quite the story that it's a tale of woe it's a tale of woe uh, dca.ca.gov sent an email see the letter attached requesting information for a complaint that has been fire- filed with our bureau bureau of household goods and services bureau holds judicial jurisdictional authority over electronics and appliance service dealers this letter is to advise the bureau is investigating a complaint filed against love to fix our license number Matt Stevenson filed a complaint on January 25th, 2023. The complainant brought his racing simulation machine to be repaired. He states that he left the machine and paid $80 for deposit for repair. He was contacted by the store and told they could repair for $240. He was asked to provide the game that was used with it as well and drop it off, which he did. He states after a week, he was told the machine was repaired and he came to retrieve it and brought it home. Uh, once he was discovered that the machine was not repaired, he brought it, the machine back and came back to the store again, which he didn't. He states he was contacted when it was repaired. He brought it back home. He states he brought it back home once again, and it did not work. At that time, he states it was told that he was told to bring it along with his PlayStation console, which he did not want to do as he used his machine for television, movie, watching. Mr. Stevenson states that Love to Fix knew he would need to have his PlayStation to test his machine for repair. He states he asked for a refund as his repair did not fix his problem. He states manager Eric refused a refund. Did you refuse a refund? He never asked for a refund. He said, fix it. We said, yes, we'll do it. Oh, he asked for a refund, but that was not to you. But that was he he asked not, me with, for not with me when he checked it in. Yeah. Uh, to conduct a fair and thorough investigation, the Bureau is requesting copies of your repair records, complainant appliance. Please forward copies of all estimates, invoices, and correspondence all related to this repair by mail to the address below. You can also fax or email Melissa to, uh, to ensure copies are received by Bureau no later than February 20th. Originals can't be returned. Uh, your cooperation in this investigation is required by the date noted above to avoid further enforcement and or disciplinary action. They are the ones who can hold your balls in a vice. If you don't have this license, you're not supposed to operate in the electronics or service at all, uh, appliance at all. So you're not supposed to be in cell phones, electronics. You're technically under that in California. So just so you know, a lot of you, I know, do not have this license. That's dumb. They will shut you down eventually. Uh, as soon as they get a complaint and so see you don't have a license, that, you're, you're done. Consumer Affairs is California's little baby but so he spun the story that now we knew even though we have playstation four or five he for also testing, told them he was trying to be compliant and he never never was never was never from was. day one he was a all correspondence was either a, two, a couple text messages and mostly phone calls he would ignore text messages so now we have to forward our call logs which only go back 500 calls anyway we have to contact t-mobile i've got to get statements from everyone who dealt with him because when he came in he was a puppy dog over the phone complete episode. calm down to the fine i'm bringing it and then when he brought it he's like you know man i'm just in a bed and i'm like yeah i don't want to fight with you over this i don't but now i'm out 700 dollars on the flight because i'm like okay i got two weeks to do this i got a light fire under their ass sitting everyone do now tell them how it is now that make sure the operating policy on this and the the follow-up is done correctly as a business owner you've got to understand the dumbest thing ever when operating policies are followed and customers deviate from planned operation, it is just why? Like, why be a dick when everything was fine? Hey, man, we warned you it was going to take three to five, took five. Warned you it was going to take a couple of weeks, holidays, took a couple of weeks. Nothing was out of the blue. The only thing that was out of the blue was the bad board coming out. And we warned him, hey, it's going to be a holiday. It's going to be hard with shipping. We're going to try this. You know, it's not a, a dealer we had done uh, business before, but they were the only ones that had the board. We still, we so- solved his issue. We tested it in-house with him here, and he absolutely fabricated the story. Now, his only solution is to give him his $240 back. That's the only solution. Or the DCA, because the next step he'll do is charge it back. Anyway, yeah. Because he feels so wronged. The only reason he feels wrong, and here's the kicker, 
over a phone call last week with Eric. What did he tell you? He called me all sorts of nasty names. I don't want to... What did he admit to you? Um, well, he... From the first repair, he had it on his rack. We didn't do the cable management because he was like, don't do that. I got my zip ties. I got my bolts. I got my whatever. That's all at home. I'll fix it. He took it home, wrenched it as tight as he could, zip tied it as tight as he could, and then he said him and his friends were having a good time racing, and they knocked it over, took it back up, and then they were having issues. So that's why he was trying to now say that the repairs aren't working because he's tipped it over. But he said a bump should not, for something that is constantly in motion and being wrenched on, cause that type of damage to make it not function. It's made for steering wheel wrenching. Bravo. It is not made for anything else. I don't care. Personally, if it doesn't look damaged, I'll return it. That's not my problem. My problem is he states it's a consistent problem, that it's the exact same problem that no longer has been present every time we've tested it. We're not the bad guys here. But if you've ever dealt with a customer like this and you know how to how to calm this down, you let me know. Because I've gone out, I've offered to fix it. I've offered to get him a label to mail it to me. I've offered to pick up the device and fix it. So I've gone out of my way. If he's three hours or five hours out, I'll retrieve it. I'll make it right. But I'm not going to then diminish the financial value when I'm already out on a negative. And I'm not going to take that loss, even $500. I'll let that license burn. I don't care. That's just me, though. I'm, I'm already fed up with shitty people in California, as you all are aware. Um, I no longer live in this state to, to avoid people like this. But for some reason, it just keeps biting me in the ass. That's the cost of doing business in California. So it's an interesting course of events. At the moment, things start getting up and going. And it's you know peace, love, happiness. We had a couple of uh, negative experiences with customers and buybacks. We're dealing with Chris Andrew and his buyback, new hands-free service, but we keep getting some of the bottom of the barrel customers. We're only open a certain amount of time. We're not 24 seven flippers like everyone else. I really don't care to be. It's just not my main source of income anymore. I've got a millions of other things going on. So whatever the guys can get during business hours, that's their thing. But apparently Andrew, who is an avid, affluent, Spanish-speaking... His Spanish isn't good, but he's a Latin, proud Latin L- gentleman. Proud Latin American. Yeah. You know what I mean? He is. He looks Latin compared to me or you. And he got called a Habibi that takes care... Or what was it? Takes advantage of lower-income people and preys upon African-American well, people. He, the guy who wrote the review said some pretty racist things about Indian people and black people. Yeah. So we got that review removed, but it's just, it was in a series of events within a week where it looked like everyone in the store didn't give a fuck from the outside view because customers are tending to get more aggressive with the way they want things done. And the, the quality of customers is, is slipping quite a bit, but that's in nature with what a people are spending in the country right now. People are withholding a lot of money. The, the scarcity is out there and B where we're advertising. And I know for a lot of you, Google, Facebook, those are your main two. Instagram's a different breed. We all know that, but Meta Business Suite can be a dick sometimes. Um, but other than that, the store in Oklahoma is up and running pretty well. I like it. Uh, we've got the signs being installed next week. What would you say besides the shitty customers, what has been your biggest disappointment in the last 40 days? Given things churning. Home okay. appliances is backed up, but if we have priority work, we got push five it. knocked out today. We got it all done today. Extra hands, extra whatever. Let's see. That's the when, you, when you get buried, you stay buried. It's hard. To, so the issue is that the work it's staying ahead of it. I did, you know, it's, it's also one of those things when you find yourself too full on work, you need to raise your prices, and everyone's starting to see that now. That's an older saying. But we need to either say the queue, raise the queue's price. The queue's already two weeks. It's full. If you want to jump into the queue, it's going to be 80 bucks, not 40 You could say, okay, well, our queue's full on TVs. Mm-hmm. We want to take somebody's spot, it's 120 bucks, whatever. It's not really fixing. It's more like if you want to skip the line, but also make it worth my time to get on it. Yeah. Because that's the benefit of small business. If they want it fixed by us, they're going to have to pay the price because we are so busy. So it's... Having the people, in my opinion, who want to take the initiative to to make those wheel and deals, and a lot of people don't have that initiative here. How do you think uh, Kyle and, and Andrew are doing? Andrew's good. He's stressed. I 
Lee's gonna up and quit or nothing, but he's doing all right. Andrew, Andrew. Kyle's still Kyle. Slow repairs. He got really good on posting for three days there and then stopped. That's, that's just, that's I, I've been stacking things on his desk. I'm like, five things to do today. And he scoots it and gets to work. It's, it's a little disappointing. He doesn't watch this anyway, but I hope he will. I have high hopes for Kyle. And there's, I've probably wanted to fire him four times in the last month. He's like, that's low per usual. <laughs> you know, I'm like, what the f***? I've called him sick on uh, a random day knowing that it was other people's days off and all the shit was going on. He called in on a, a Thursday and it was the, the Eric show. Yeah. So then Eric was here alone with 30 like customers. Like $1,400. Like a really good for a single person day. but Individually $1,400, <laughs> which is an average of $200 an hour in repairs. Which is an average of three iPhone 11s. Or, I was doing two devices at a time, the entire, at least. Yeah, the so he, he kept it up. But, you know, when I did it's this. not sustainable. I, well, it is. I, I did it for three years by myself. And I had on and off help with sign waving or um, passing out cards, things like that. But nothing to the, the nature that some of these people are doing, you know, $100,000 a year sitting at their house having people show up to their front door, that that's just not sustainable because then you're going to have an angry customer that's going to burn your house down. The only thing I'm disappointed is the lack of initiative. For the last couple of weeks, I thought Eric was quiet quitting because uh, we haven't recorded. We've been busy. He's been busy with the store. And then uh, he tends not to reply after hours to even you know, the simplest of questions. I'm with people on he's, he's, he's becoming more of a hard ass with his free time. I'm Rightfully he- so. Healthy, healthy boundaries. I understand it. I get it. We came to an understanding. It's not the the stores the issue. It's more of the uh, the what ifs future operation. But I'm going to leave Eric with a, a Sony EV10 set of batteries lens. We're going to get some some footage. What we'll do is we'll record the zoom for the audio. You'll record the video on the camera, apply to the zoom. The camera will pick up the audio. We'll cut that out of the camera. I'll record the zoom and the audio from my camera angle, and then we'll have the podcast. So we'll make it work. Um, We want to maintain a a healthy lifestyle, but it's got to be beneficial for everybody. It's going to be kind of hard with the the time change for me. It'll be like 8 p.m., 6 p.m. our time. Anything else crazy happen while I was gone? Not like crazy, crazy, but we had a the gentleman with the the laser jet, whatever, wanted to get his printer serviced. We pull it in, do the cleaning. Still has the laser read issue. It's a uh, whatever board controls the laser head and the scanning is bad. Need to swap that. They only sell it for like two hundred and fifty dollars. It's at the complete center of the unit. It's two three hours of labor. You know, it's gonna cost this much. You can get a printer for two hundred and twenty dollars. So he's like, perfect. I'll buy a new printer. Uh, forget that. I'm done. I'll pick it up whenever. Called two days ago, a week and a half after he was supposed to come in. And he's like, yeah, where's my, uh, where's that estimate? You're going to email the estimate so I could send it to work and they could figure out what they're doing with this. We've never talked about that before. We got him his estimate. He's good. He's going to come grab it now. But it was just, he, it was, I was going to pick it up. Everything's fine too. He was suddenly like, oh, where's my paperwork? He said you were going to send it before it. We were going to, I mean, if anything, we were going to copy it and give it to him when he gets in, you know, but he wanted to copy in advance. That was the end. Because there hasn't been, there hasn't been crazy, crazy, except for Naeem, who's been running for like two months now on that stuff. And the, the wheel guy who's doubled back. The wheel guy just either needs to eat a bag of flaccid urethras or... <laughs> he needs to bring my parts back so I can send them back to Amazon. I'll get my 200 bucks back. And then um, I'll give him his broken stuff and I'll charge him a minimum for my five hours of labor. It'll, it'll eat up the cost of the repair. But I, I'll at least get my $200 back. Yeah. He'll get something back. I'll give him 10 bucks. Sounds like he's bucks. getting like $30 at that point. But he's got to understand that if I can use that, if hypothetically, if I can use that machine today in this store with that PlayStation 5, it's working. It's working. That's not the, the system. That is not the system. Me, Naeem's got to understand he is losing out on, on money by not charging for his time, not valuing his time. It looks to me like his business model is free diagnostics, not in-depth. It's more surface-level checks. And if we break it, we don't pay for it. That's his idea of business. Um, I remember doing free diagnostics, man, and it was the worst roundabout. Because I would waste six hours on something being like, if I fix it, if I fix it, I'll make $600. If I fix this, I will make $250. When I made, oh, it's funny. Janet Titus was just in here. 
longtime customer, knew me in the, the flea market. And Janet is an old time, we'll call her uh, pothead. She, she's just like a hip old lady who was running around in the 60s. She's like 70 now. And she, everything's always been cool. But the first thing I ever fixed to hers was a laptop. And it was bad hard drive. Still new hard drive wouldn't work. New daughter board for the hard drive wouldn't work. Trying to get her data, do this, do that. I spent six hours at home, probably seven hours. And she was like, I'll pay $300. It's fine. Just make sure the computer works. This is where it got really bad. Because I think I spent six hours originally one day just going over everything, how to fix it, what to do. Turns out it was like a version of BitLocker back in 2015. Still couldn't fix it. This woman still paid me every fucking dollar. Every dime. Didn't get a fixed laptop. It's you know, I just couldn't believe it. But it's shit like that where you're, okay, now you're worth something to the customer. Because they were like, well, I feel like you did something. That never you happens. You tried your damnedest. 99.9999. No, 100% of customers do not pay when they don't need to. I've spent 19 hours on like a fucking, on, on and off. Like you said, six, seven hours on a, on a project, on an excess, trying to fix it for a guy. And they will come in and you will give them three page breakdown of every single issue, every single step you did, the whole thing, the whole way. And they throw it on the ground and they're like, you didn't fix it. You didn't do a single thing for me. I don't want to pay a penny. Even though they agree. Even though they've agreed. To they, a, a standard. And they minimum. paid up front and they. Now they want their money back. Yeah. A name, but this name took it to an extreme trying to do the chargeback because he knows that we knew he was a business. And he, he texted us before, right before we started recording. It's not about the money. I'm like, he's just doing it to mess with us. Oh yeah. It's not about the money, but you know, he wants us to remove the, the reviews. I left him a personal review from my personal uh, interaction. With You're him. owning it. I'm a business owner. I didn't tell anyone to come to my business. I said that I own a local business. I do business with other business owners. Never once have I had a business owner act this way or make this type of deal. He acted like a 12 year old child. And now I have to treat him like a 12 year old child and tell his parents. Yelp being his parents. It looks like he does a lot of business and advertising through Yelp and Facebook. I went and put it on Yelp and Facebook, not recommended. I don't, I do not recommend him or his business whatsoever. Marvin cell care is not one. I don't recommend you shop with me. You want to know why? Here's why. Unfortunately, I'm going to tell you the truth. If I don't want to fix it, if it's not worth it, I am very blunt. I I am not here to make millions of dollars off of every single person. I am here to enjoy what I do enough so that I can be fine, pay my bills, my kids go to school. Great. I'm not in it for the quick cash like most of these people are where it's like $300, 15 minutes. That person's going to leave just resentful of you and your business. I started this with a whole like petty passion. It's what most successful things happen in my life is a petty passion. And the, this business, this podcast, these things that I love to do that start out of like a, I'm going to bitch about something or I'm not going to do is so much more fulfilling to me. It's stupid. Little things turn, little things happen. But at the end of the day, I'm like, you know what? It's fine. I'm good with it. A lot of these people lose sight of it and then they want to be like one step up or one better. I, 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 don't, I don't get it. It's a uh, Walmart's Walmart and that's why there's one on every corner, you know, Starbucks. I'd open a Starbucks across from a Starbucks and be fine. Those companies only succeed due to volume. Yeah. It's not sustainable on a smaller scale. But, you know, the nature of leaving them a review may seem like it's petty, but it's effective. He contacted us back and now he wants us to leave, remove the review. And he'll cancel the chargeback. We asked him to cancel the chargeback and we won't leave a review or we won't remove a review. And that's fine. Even if he thinks we will. But once he cancels the chargeback, he can't reopen it. Nope. That's unfortunate. MX is right to die for the customers. If you say no, they take your word 100% of that. You, yeah. you want this. Yeah. So it is what it is. Uh, we appreciate you all viewing, listening, subscribing. Uh, we're going to get back to a regular schedule. Hit the like. Hit the subscribe, and we'll see you next time on During Business Hours. Life can be super happy. Life can be super sad. I'm trying super hard to separate the good and bad. I go back to my future just to get to my past. But knowing me, my DeLorean will probably come.